In this video, we're looking at complex numbers, and in particular, De Moivre's theorem. This is used for finding the roots and powers of complex numbers. In general form, it is any number raised to the power is found by raising the modulus of that number to the power and multiplying the argument, the angle, by that number. But it applies to roots as well as powers, and the nth root of a number is the same as raising that power to 1 over n. So we raise the modulus to 1 over n and we multiply the argument by 1 over n. But in more common language, if we want the nth root of z, we take the nth root of the modulus and we divide the argument by n. So we have two forms of de Moivre's theorem. One applying when you're raising it to a power, and the other when you're finding the roots. And the big difference between the two is that when you find roots, it's important to find all the solutions, and there will be n of them, not just one. This is our method. We convert the number to polar form. We take the nth root of the modulus, we divide the argument by n, and we find the n roots, which are 2 pi over n apart. And this applies to all numbers, positive and negative reals, as well as imaginary and complex. For example, if z cubed is 8, a real number, we need to find z. So, we convert it to polar form. We find the nth root of the modulus, and the third root of 8 is 2. And we divide the argument by zero, by three rather, and that gives us our argument, but it only gives us the first solution. Z1, our first solution, is two cis zero. Our next solution is two pi over n apart, so we add two pi over three, and our third solution is two pi over three on from that, giving us three different solutions. If we take z2 and raise it to the third power, we will get 8. Let's do it again, but with a slightly more complex one. z to the 4 is minus 4 plus 5i, and we need to find possible solutions of z. So, convert it to polar form, and if you can't do that, we should look at the video to converting to exact polar forms, because we're not going to cover it here. In this case, it's the square root of 50, so it's 3 pi over 4. And we take the fourth root of that modulus, and the fourth root of a square root is the 8th root. So we have the 8th root of 50. And we divide the argument by n. 3 pi over 4 divided by 4 is 3 pi over 16. So that's our first solution. But we need to find the three others it's to the power of 4, so there will be four distinct solutions. We add 2 pi over n, and since we're dealing with 16 we're adding 8 pi over 16 each time. 3 pi over 16, 8 plus 8 pi over 16 is 11 pi over 16. Once more, 19 pi over 16, and again 27 pi over 16. There are four distinct solutions that all valid and must all be listed in the answers. Negative solutions are valid, that is if z to the 4 is minus 5i and we convert it to polar form we might convert it to 5 cis 3 pi over 2 or we might convert it to 5 cis negative pi over 2 going the other way and applying de Moivre's theorem the third root of 5 cis minus pi over 6 because it's pi over 2 divided by 3, which is a valid solution. Just be a little bit careful, because as we find the further solutions, we add 2 pi over n three times, then our fourth one will be this number here, cube root of 8 is this 11 pi over 6, which is the same number as minus pi over 6, because it's 2 pi more. Both solutions are valid, but only list one of them. You need three solutions for a cube root, 
four for a fourth root likewise. So there we have it. We convert to polar form. We take the nth root of the modulus. We divide the argument by n and then we add the n separate roots at 2 pi over n apart. Now at this point I'm going to discuss why we get n solutions. This isn't necessary in order to solve the problem but helps explain why we actually have these different solutions. That is because any complex number can be written in polar form but it can also be written as the same form lots of 2 pi apart. That yields different solutions. Let's take this example. Z cubed is a particular complex number and applying De Moravis theorem to roots we get the cube root of r and a third of the angle. So we can draw that in. The number is the cube root, whatever that is, and the angle is now a third of the starting angle. But if we were to take 2 pi more, we would get the same solution, which is r cis theta plus 2 pi, and applying De Moravis theorem, we now get another solution, which is theta plus 2 pi all over 3. So it's theta over 3 plus 2 pi over 3, and our solution is 2 pi over 3 further onwards, from the one in red to the one in green. Both solutions just using a different starting point. And we can do the same again. This time we'll take two entire circles, so we'll take our argument and increase it by 4 pi. Now, when we apply De Moravis theorem, we'll get theta plus 4 pi all divided by 3, and our solution is now 4 pi over 3 further on from what it was the first time. If we apply this one more time, three complete revolutions, we add 6 pi and we divide by 3, but at this point 6 pi over 3 divides to give 2 pi, which is actually the same solution. So once we've got to our multiple, we're back to where we started. And the original solution is now our next solution. So if we have third roots, then we have three solutions. It all comes down to that 2 pi over n generates n different solutions.